Welcome to part two of this series of presentations dealing with in situ concrete compressive strength assessment. This time we're dealing with small volumes. Again, we'll be taking the European standard EN 13791 as an example of how the standards deal with such topics. So let's begin with EN 13791 strength assessment for small volumes. The last revision to EN 13791 back in 2019 introduced the concept of a small test region for a structural assessment. So what constitutes a small test region? Well, it should not exceed approximately 30 cubic metres of concrete. This aligns to three 10 cubic metre truck loads or four 7.5 cubic metre truck loads. The strength assessment for such test regions has been simplified and the number of cores required has been significantly reduced. And again we have two applications, the first being the characteristic strength for structural assessment and the second being to assess the compressive strength class in case of doubt. Here we can see the workflow for the first application. We begin by doing an NDT survey we identify the lowest strength location or locations. We take cores at these locations. And finally, we calculate the characteristic compressive strength. So let's go through an example. First of all, we do an NDT survey. It can be rebound hammer or pulse velocity. In this case, I'm using a Pundit PD8050 to measure the pulse velocities. When I have the grid complete, I have to identify the lowest NDT test result. Now we have to take three cores around this location. We calculate the mean of the three core values and this is the characteristic strength for this test region. Now let's look at the second application assessment of compressive strength class in case of doubt. The purpose is to assess the minimum characteristic strength associated with the specified compressive strength class. So if we have a strength class of C30, C37 specified, then FCK spec is 30 MPA. Here we can see the workflow if we're using cores only. We divide larger volumes into test regions not exceeding 30 cubic meters. We take cores in each of these test regions and then we confirm the strength class. This table summarizes how we have to do the assessment. If we simply have one test region volume of 30 cubic meters, we take three cores and then the criteria is based on the lowest test result with a safety factor. If we have higher volumes, up to 180 cubic meters, we need to take two cores in each 30 cubic meter volume. And then we have two criteria, both of which must be satisfied. The first is based on the mean of the core test results. And the second is based on the lowest test result. So let's look at an example. In this case, I have a specified characteristic strength of C2530 and I have 180 cubic meter volume. So my first job is to divide this test region into six smaller test regions of 30 cubic meters. I take two cores in each of these smaller test regions, and then I have to calculate the mean and do the simple calculation to see if it satisfies the criteria. In this case, it does. I also have to look at the lowest test result and again do the simple calculation to see if it satisfies the criterion. If both of these are satisfied, I can confirm that this concrete is C2530. For small volumes also, we can make life easier by using NDT. And here we can see the workflow. First, we have to divide larger concrete volumes into test regions less than 180 cubic meters. Then we do an NDT survey. We identify core test locations. We take cores at these locations. And finally, we confirm the strength class. This table 
summarizes the assessment based on cores plus NDT. The number of NDT test locations depends on the volume of concrete and the number of cores also. For anything larger than a 30 cubic meter volume, we have two criteria, both of which have to be satisfied. Let's go through an example. Once again, I have an 180 cubic meter volume test region and I have a specified C2530 concrete, which I would like to confirm. So my first step is to do an NDT survey. And in this case, I'm doing a pulse velocity survey and I need to have 20 test results for this volume of concrete. Once that's completed, I have to identify the lowest NDT test location and I have to identify the median test location or locations. Now I have to take one core at the lowest NDT location and do the calculation to see if it satisfies the criterion. Then I have to take two cores at the location closest to the median NDT location. I calculate the mean of these cores and see if it satisfies the criterion. If both criteria are satisfied, I can confirm that the concrete is C2530. Finally, if we compare the two methods, we can see that using NDT drastically reduces the number of cores required as the volume of the test region increases.